fun. We're so glad to come across to you once again. My name is Bartholomew, and for those of you who already know, I am God's servant, I am your friend, and the one using to bring to us what is the counsel of God is at such a time as this. And like I would always start, and that is to appreciate you, especially those of you who have been able to subscribe to our YouTube page and also waiting for me maybe to come live to you on the Facebook. We thank God for you. I do not take you for granted. And the reason is this, there are over a thousand on the one streamings, YouTube channels, and various ministries that you could tune into, but you have made our time to be part of this. We appreciate God for your time, and we pray that that God Almighty, who you have honored at such a time as this, believing that he will bring you a message that will help you in times like this, that God will locate you and his banner will continue to fly wherever you are and to make sure that the word and the counsel of God comes to pass in your life in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Once it is such, I mean, we cannot appreciate the volume of the mercies of God that is prevailing for us at such a time as this. You cannot. Because if God can open your eyes and you see the struggle for dominance, the struggle for who will outdo the order in terms of the world powers, and there are so many things at stake at such a time as this. If God can open your eyes and you are the kind of person that will see the prominence or the preeminence of God over all this, you will have no choice than to run to where God is. It is only God that can help us and deliver us at such a time as this. But as we share with us in the first part, the Lord has already given us a sure word, and that sure word is that this will all pass over. And when it does, what manner of person ought we to be? And God does not leave us without a witness. He always prepares us way ahead of time so that we can position ourselves to live in his light and in his power. And that is why we are continuing part two of when all this is over. If you've not watched part one, please go back into the YouTube page where you are receiving this from and watch part one. That will give you the link up that you need to continue in part two. And prayerfully, we will go ahead until we end it in part four. God bless you richly in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. There are a few scriptures we have read. One was Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Read it. And the other also, we read Lamentations chapter 3 verse 21 through to 26, and this speak to us very clearly. If there's anything I encourage you to do at such a time as this, it is the fact that when you read the Word of God, read it as though those events had just happened. Don't read it as something that has happened over thousands of years ago and is irrelevant or trying to encourage us or act as a form of therapeutic measure to help us deal with issues in our time. No, this is as real, more real, more current than our daily news that we receive. You know why? Because there are so many things hidden in the heart of man. The scripture is so clear about it that the heart of man is so desperately wicked. A friend of mine used to say that even the heart of man in these days is not as wicked as that of the devil. 
I say, well, it's because that heart of man is under the control and the manipulation of the devil. So there is only one devil who is the wicked one, and he operates through any heart that can yield itself to him to wreak havoc. That is the reason why Jesus the Christ has come that we will have life and have it more abundantly. We thank him for the grace and the mercies that he has bestowed upon us. So when we follow all this together, we will arrive in the perfect will of God. Amen. So when all this is over, there is no stopping now. When all this is over, there is no stopping. Number one, don't behave as this is the victory of all victories. It's never the victory of all victories when all this is over. It is only one victory amongst the numerous victories that we need to secure and enforce in this earth realm while we await for the victory of all victories. You may ask, what is the victory of all victories? It is when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus the Christ, our Messiah, our Redeemer, when he returns down to us to take us with him and to secure his earthly realm for a thousand years before when he will bring down to us the spiritual heavenly Jerusalem to come to earth, when he now rules this earth realm, when the devil is bound finally, when death is conquered, when everything that is contrary to his will has been subdued and he reigns as king of kings, which he is, who he is, then we have the victory of all victories. So whatever happens at the end of all this, that is only one victory. It is only one victory among the victories that we are going to be having, having until Jesus Christ returns. So it's important to know that. So don't relax. There is no stopping. There is no stopping. The scripture makes it clear that there remains no rest. There remains no rest. We are in a battle and this battle continues. It is the battle of enforcing the victory that he has given to us. And he is counting on you and counting on me as those of us who are his children to enforce these victories. And that is why he needs a lot more foot soldiers. He needs a lot more people who are militant, not militant in the way of the world, but militant by the power of, of his Holy Spirit to be able to run forward and secure the victory he gives to us and enforce it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, today in this part, I just want to go straight to what Joshua did. Remember Joshua, when I read the scriptures these days or listen to the scriptures these days, and I see how relevant the word of God given to us is to our own time. It never ceases to amaze me. And that assures me the more that there is nothing we will go through in this earth realm that God has not gone through for us by the person of Jesus Christ. And we will continue to secure that victory. I looked at the person of Joshua, how Joshua fought a battle. And it is the battle that I can tell you is the battle of battles. And he helped the children of Israel to move in the vision that God gave to Moses. And that was the vision of bringing them to the promised land. And he fought over 31 kings. He fought over 31 kings and secured massive victory and secured the promises of God and also distributed 
these gifts to the children of Israel. But he made a statement, which is the one I'd like to read for us. And then we will key the point. And that is when, at the end of all the victory, he made a statement to them. And that statement was unique. Let's read it in Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. We'll read it and understand what Joshua was saying to the people. And that is from... I'm going to read for us um, from verse 14 of Joshua chapter 24. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, fear the Lord and serve him. Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you, serve the Lord, choose you this day. That is, and if you seem, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. When you read through, you would see the statement of Joshua. So when all this is over, serve God in truth and in spirit. Do not for any reason change your confession of faith. There are so many people that when, I mean, it could happen to anyone, when you face difficulties and challenges, you make so many promises to God how you will serve him. But when at the end he has fulfilled what he has said he will do, then you kind of go back from what you have vowed. The Joshua is saying to them here, God has brought you out and he has kept his word. Now serve him. But as we all know, God does not force anyone. God will always present the truth unto you. He says in his word, I present unto you life and death. But I encourage you, choose life that you may live. So God is here saying to us, all this will pass away. Do not relent from serving him. He is the true God. He is the only one who can deliver us continuously. Remember what I'm saying to us. This is only one victory in so many victories. God is still faithful. After Joshua passed, this, the children of Israel face worse battles than they ever could imagine. And those battles determined whether they truly meant every word they said or they were just saying it to please Joshua. I would think some of them did say it just to please Joshua or maybe because of the goodness of God at that particular time, they made those vows. And that is why God says to us, do not always be quick to make vows that you know you will not fulfill. You will not be able to fulfill. But God wants us to be people that will keep those words. So at the end of all this, continue to serve God. Continue to honor him. Continue to be who you said you will be in every dimension. Now, the other thing we want to bring across to you is this. When it's all over, 
seek the Lord more. Seek him more. Because who God is in your life will determine how you prevail in times and days to come. Seek him more. What does it mean to, what do we mean when we say seek God more? It means you worship him. It means you honor him. It means you serve him in truth and in spirit in a way that you have never done before. In the name of Jesus Christ. The other one, when this is all over, you need to be a person of prayer. Praying can never be something you will joke with at any point in time, whether in perilous times or in good times. It is our mainstay as we navigate through this difficult time. And when we come out on the other side, we begin to see that prayer, who God has, I mean, what God has used to ensure that we gain victory will continue to be part of our lives. You will never, ever, ever in any time at all have an overdose of prayer. Whatever happens, you will pray more. And if you do not know how to pray, I encourage you do three things. Number one, acknowledge you don't need, you don't know how to pray. Acknowledge it and say, I don't know how to pray. And then also depend on the Holy Spirit. You know what the word of God says to us very clearly that we do not know how to pray or how or what we ought to pray. Everyone is in this equation. There's no one that knows exactly how to pray it. And that is the reason why we rely upon the Holy Spirit, who is the one that prays for us, prays through us, prays in us, and make sure that we pray right. Open up and say, oh God, I don't know how to pray. The other thing you can do is this. Find people that pray. Connect with him. There are so many opportunities in our time these days that you can connect with. You can connect with this channel at time. Make contact with us. We spend time in prayer and we do seek the Lord in prayer. Then the other thing you can do is the word of God, the Bible. Every word of God, there is a statement uttered or written to express our conditions. There is nothing that we go through that is not already contained in the word of God. When you find such things in the word of God, what I encourage you to do is personalize them, confess them as though you are the one speaking them. Let those words in scriptures give you voice, give you voice. And that voice will be expressed towards our father. And he will hear because they are in line with the word of God. And that is what the Lord wants us to understand in such a time as this. Pray, pray, and pray. Amen. And listen, as you are praying, the Lord God is giving you great insights. Write those insights down. Be ready to act upon them. Bring out every situation that will enable you to act on them and begin to get ready to act on them. And the next opportunity you get, begin to act on them. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself will strengthen you. Hallelujah. This is the promise of God to us. Prayer is something that we need to do all the time in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in saying this, do not procrastinate whatever God has put in your heart to do. Begin to do it. We do not have all the time. And as I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself as well. We do not have all the time on earth to do what we need to do. And that is the reason we should not procrastinate what God has asked us to do. These are the few points that I want to put across to you. And I do believe that they will encourage you. They will strengthen you. They will give you hope. And I believe also you will get directions from this in order 
to be ready when all this is over. For someone's sake, I want you to note this. Relying on the word of God is the best thing anyone can do. When we started, if you've not watched it, go back to the YouTube pages of this channel and also watch Living in Uncertain Times. Each time I myself go back to watch them, I begin to realize how relevant those words are to us in this time. And that is the fact that we will get into a season you do not know who to believe. When you do not know who to believe, believe God and his word. Believe God and his word. He has made a way he will carry you through in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is where we stop for today. So we encourage you once again as you watch, pray. And as you pray, also find time to share it. And above all, find time to subscribe. Press the notification bell and you will get every information that will pass across to you. And above all, we then take you as part of this team that God would use to carry these messages to people around the globe. My name again is Bartholomew Oji, and I bring you this from the throne room of grace. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Keep winning, keep being victorious, keep prevailing from everything that may come your way, all because Jesus Christ has given us a victory. God bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. I look forward to bringing part three and part four to you of when all this is all over. God bless you.